Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one we're going to be doing part 3 of the multiplayer in Unity series using Photon. In this video we're going to be adding camera movement so we can actually move our mouse and control the camera around our player and be able to follow our player around. And then we'll also add some little shooting thing where we'll fire off a projectile in the direction we're looking. We're not going to get into doing damage this video and dying or anything and respawning, just simple aiming and moving is for this video. But of course, first, before we get into any of that, I need to thank my patrons. A special thanks to Flow State Games, Average Morning, Art Farrell, Bid Array, Remy Baldwin, and Full Bomb. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link will be down below. If not, then there are also links down below to social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help me out on any of those, it'd be greatly appreciated. Now let's get to the video. Okay, so a quick recap of what we have already is that we can go to the main menu, get into a queue, we can match up with someone else and go into a little arena together. And currently all we can do is move and control our players, you know, forwards, backwards, left, right. But that's that's it, and obviously that's pretty boring. So we need to start actually adding some gameplay mechanics in to, you know, show you guys how to implement them in multiplayer using Photon. So currently we have the player script, which has a Photon view, which is just something that is synced across uh, different clients. And then we have the transform view, which basically syncs the transform component across by um, syncing the position and rotation. We don't sync scale because we don't have to, so it's a waste. But if we do need to sync scale, then of course we can do that. And then here we've got movement, which is the script I wrote, uh, which is really simply just taking an input and moving. We're going to make this a little bit more you know, advanced, this uh, video, so we'll get into that any second now. Okay, so for the camera movement, we're not going to be writing any code really, we're just going to be using Cinemachine. I've got plenty of videos in the past uh, making different random character controllers, uh, camp for cameras, but to be honest, cameras are so uh, simple in a sense of, you know, most of the time you just want something that moves when you move your mouse, right? Uh, Unity has Cinemachine. If you don't already have Cinemachine, go to Window, Package Manager. Um, if it's not installed, then go to All Packages and give it a second to load. Once it's loaded, it'll give you all the packages that are, you know, with Unity or that you can get with Unity that aren't third party. And we have Cinemachine, which has, you know, basically infinite camera tools. Any camera tool you'll ever think you want to make, they'll have it, basically. I've never found something that they don't have that I need. Uh, obviously, of course, if that's the case, then you can make something yourself. But Cinemachine covers, like, everything, pretty much. And I'm not going to waste time this video actually just twiddling with, uh, Cinemachine values. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is when we've set it up to the camera part, I'm going to pause the video or pause, well, you know, I'm going to cut essentially and just show you the final values for that camera rather than making you sit there and watch me tweak everything because it's, it's just a case of preference. But um, what we're going to do first is we're going to go to the player, which is in resources, player, and we're going to make them a sphere. So I'm going to say uh, make the capsule be a sphere mesh and bring them down uh, the body down to 0 0.5 because currently they are floating above the ground so if we go 0 0.5 now the base of the sphere is on the ground and that means we have to tweak the player's character controller to fit so the uh, height is now one unit and the center is at 0.5 so now the character controller fits the sphere player that's just what i want to go with it's up to you guys but yeah that's what i'm going with okay go back and now on the actual unity on in unity sorry if you have package uh, the package for cinemachine installed then we can actually make a Cinemachine camera. So we go to camera, not to camera, sorry, we go up here, Cinemachine. Uh, we're gonna go for a free look camera, which is the one that's set up to allow you to rotate and orbit your character. Now it wants a follow and a look at, which is gonna be our player in both scenarios. The one problem is we have to spawn in our player across the Photon network at runtime. So the solution I go with, which I mean, if any of you guys have a better solution, feel free to let me know. But we have this camera in by default and the player spawner up here knows about this camera. And because the player spawner spawns in the player, when it spawns it in, we get back the game object instance of the player. And what we can do is we can then tell the camera component in here to start following that new player. So that only your the camera only follows your player on your client. So that's what we're going to do. We've got the camera here. Let's obviously not bother setting up anything yet. We'll just leave it how it is. We'll call it uh, the camera underscore player. Now, if you're not familiar with Cinemachine, this isn't actually a camera. It's just camera movement. And it feeds, if we go to the actual camera over here, it has a Cinemachine brain component. This is actually the output. This just allows other Cinemachine components like this one to move that camera. Um, yep. So now we've got that. I'm going to go put it. We're going to make it a prefab probably because we want to maybe use it in multiple scenes. So let's go to prefabs and make it a prefab and we'll go put it in there. So the player spawner now needs to reference that. And if you look at the name of the script, it's a Cinemachine free look. OK, so if we go to the player spawner, we're going to add a field. Serialize field private Cinemachine free look. 
Okay. And if you mouse over it, it'll want you to import Cinemachine. And we'll just say player camera. Okay, so we're going to drag that in in the inspector. And on start, when we spawn in the player, we're going to say uh, like var, var player equals that. So this is the cached player, okay? And then we want to say, well, player camera dot. And we want to look what we want to set. We want to set the when it's compiled. Follow and look at. So dot follow is equal to, and what does it want? It wants a uh, transform. So we're going to set it equal to the player instance, but it's not happy because that's a game object, and it wants the transform of it. So dot transform. Then the player camera dot look at. It's going to be equal. Wait, was there a function for that? Or was it just uh, that? It's, we want to set the property. Player dot transform. So we're going to set both those fields when we spawn the player in here, the follow and the look at. Um, all we need to do now is tell the player spawner to know which camera that is, the player camera over here, and then that's good to go. So whenever we spawn in a player now, it should uh, have the camera follow our instance. Now we could go and build and test this, but I want to actually just set up the camera first. So let's do some testing. Let's drag in the player to the scene, set him to zero, yep, and tell the camera manually. Remember, we'll have to reset this to follow the player and track them. Okay. Here it is, it's looking at the player, but we want to actually set these up. So I'm going to go ahead and skip now, as I said I would, set up all these settings, and then get back to you guys. Okay, I really haven't changed too much, but I'll go ahead and show you what I have changed. So we're saying the follow and look at is the player, obviously we're going to change that in a second. Uh, common lens on, standby update, never, that's not really that important. The main important things are the rigs here. So make sure top rig, if you want to go the same settings as me, is 4, 5, then mid is 2, 4, and then bottom is 0.2, and then 3. And then down here, the only thing I've changed is on each of the aims, make the Y offset be 0.5, because otherwise we're going to be staring at the origin of the player, which is the z bottom, his, the base of the sphere. We want to have the center of the player be the actual center, which is the 0.5 units up on the Y. So I've just set all those to 0.5, and that's all I've changed. Everything else is default. So if I maybe leave this as 0.5 uh, on the Y, this is how you can preview what it looks like at different angles. I'd say that looks all right for what we want. So let's put it at 0.5, which is the center. And I'm going to set these both to none now. So let's go none and none and then apply. So all the settings there are now applied. Um, now there's plenty of stuff here which we can get rid of. Now I'm not actually sure how we do this. Oh no, that's, that's fine. The reason we're getting these warnings is because we haven't actually got a target yet, which is fine. We're just going to ignore it really. We only have the target when the game starts and that is okay. So I'm going to go ahead and build the game. Just make sure you delete the player object. Make sure the player object is applied and everything. That's all good. The camera's there. Everything's all set up. We might want to apply that as well. All the prefabs are saved. Okay, let's go give it a go. Okay, let's give it a go. So we've got Dapper here. Let's press continue, find opponent. We'll put it on full screen. And we'll open up our other one and we'll search. We'll get connected. Now, here's this one I'm controlling. So let's move. Oh, there's the other player. And as you see, actually, if I move this to the side, we can move around the other player like normal, but we can also look now. Uh, there is one problem, which is currently movement is not relative to where we're facing. So if I press forwards, I always move in that direction. Even if I'm looking this direction, I press forwards, I fall off, right? We want to do something about that. And that ties in with the aiming as well. We need to be able to move, we need to be able to aim relative to where we're looking. Um, I'm going to keep that very simple though. There's no code for that. We're just going to, I'll show you when we make the player's like little gun or whatever we're going to use. Um, if I go back to the player's movement though, so we go to the uh, movement script. All we want to do is make this relative. Okay, so let's get to that. Okay, so to move relative to the camera, we're going to need to know what the camera is. So we're going to need to get a uh, reference to it. Let's have a private reference to a transform. Oops. All right, private transform. Uh, like camera or main camera transform okay and then on start after this we'll say main camera transform is equal to camera dot main dot transform okay so we've cached the main camera transform we don't have to get it every frame we get it once then when we uh, move down here we want to say well vector free forward is main camera transform dot forward and right is main camera transform dot right. So we cache those vectors and then we set both of their uh, y values to zero. 
because we don't want to care about our tilt as to how we move. We only care about two axes, two axes, not three. Um, if we aim our camera down towards the ground, like we tilt down to the ground, we don't want to go slower or try going into the ground. We just want to zero those out. And then we also want to uh, then normalize them so that they are not, well, so, they're, so that they have a magnitude of one. They're both the same magnitude. Otherwise we'll get weird speed inconsistencies. And then what we want to do is we want to uh, rotate to face the way we are aiming, kind of. So we want to say, well, vector free calculated movement is equal to the forward vector multiplied by our movement vector up here uh, dot z plus right times by our movement dot x. Remember our y is zero. I don't want to normalize that, so dot normalized. And then finally, we're left with a vector with a size of one that um, is our final movement. And then from that, we can actually just say look in that direction so that the player always faces that direction. So transform.rotation is equal to quaternion dot look rotation. So quaternion is to do with angles, and inside there, there's a function that rotates you to face the vector you pass in. So we're going to say, well, rotate to face the direction of our movement. So we always face forwards, basically. Um, and then when we move, all we want to do is just say move calculated movement uh, times move speed. And time dot delta time is already inside there. So that is good as far as I'm concerned. And now that means we can actually aim and look around. And we're not going to bother testing that yet. We'll test that later. Um, let's just get the gun working. Just firing some projectile off. That's all we care about, okay? So if we go to the player again, let's go to resources, player and see here's the player now his forwards forwards in unity is the z-axis um so forwards is blue that is the forward direction so if we want to um fire something off in the way we're facing we'll fire it in that direction we'll put a gun aiming in that direction so on the body uh, actually we could just do it straight onto the player from being completely honest um let's just say add a 3d cube and make it uh point one point one point one but scale it on the z so it's like a unit long and we'll set it at a y of 0.5 so it's in the center and let's actually put point oops on the z for how far forwards is it well it's probably 0.75 uh, it depends how big we actually make this so we could just stick that on the end so that's his that's his little gun right it's aiming in the direction he's facing and we're going to spawn projectiles out of there okay i think that makes sense We'll call this like weapon, okay? And if we then make a script called, well, make a folder called, uh, I don't know, weapons. We probably won't have many scripts in this project anyway, but we'll go with weapons. Make a folder called uh, weapon. I'm not thinking, like for this project, we're not gonna add like, you know, guns and swords and like uh, different kinds of weapons. We're just gonna have the player's weapon. Uh, we'll put this in photon tutorial dot weapons, and then what we want to do is we want to, for each player, take input, but only take input uh, if this belongs to us. So if we go back look at movement. The same things we want to have from movement is the fact that it's a mono behavior pun. So we go player uh, the weapon is a mono behavior pun, like so. Um, but then we want to make sure, well actually, I guess it's different for this one. We we can just share the same uh, photon view as the parent actually, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, I'm gonna put this script on the the root of the player is, is probably the smartest idea. So if we go up here and we add the, the weapon script. Script is missing apparently, probably because it didn't compile, okay. Let's have that compiled, just give it a second. Then we can add weapon onto here. Now, what's the weapon wanting to do? Well, it's wanting to know a transform of where to spawn from. So let's say uh, serialize field private transform, and we'll just call it um, spawn point. Okay. And from the spawn point, we can then get the position of the spawn point and fire it off. So we want to say, let's have the update function where we take input, okay? So we'll have private void update. And just like the movement over here, we say 
Well, if the photon view is mine, then take input. So I mean, why not just have that same thing over here? And then for take input, we'll go make that function. So only if this belongs to us, we will take input. The input's gonna say, well, if input dot get mouse button down zero, return, and we'll change that logic to be if not. So what we're gonna say is, we'll check every frame, you know, did they press the left mouse button? And if they didn't press the left mouse button, then we don't care. If they did press it, the left mouse button, then we want to do, st do something. Now, obviously, yeah, you might want fire ray and other variables in your shooting script. All I think we need is a projectile. Um, whoops, let's make that serialized field. We want a game object to spawn in, so we'll call it projectile. And then a speed variable at the top. I don't know, let's make a float. Why am I typing this wrong every time? private float um, projectile speed. Now, as I said, um, we're not going to actually, whoops, we're not going to actually make a proper full attacking system. We're just going to spawn it off and uh, spawn it and add some force to it. Or set, set its velocity, right? We'll do something like that. We'll get the rigid body off the uh, projectile, which I think will make sense. Okay. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to photon instantiate um, the prefab. So photon network dot instantiate the um, projectile dot name because it's going to get it from the resources folder. Then we need to give it um, a position to spawn in at and a rotation. So the position is the spawn point dot position and then the rotation is going to be the rotation of the spawn point. So then if we fire it off in its forward direction, if we give its forward direction a certain velocity, then it's going to go hopefully forwards. That's the plan. So we'll say the rotation is the uh, spawn point dot rotation. I think that makes sense. Now, if we wanted to do extra stuff, we could cache this. But as far as I'm concerned, actually, no, sorry, we do need to do some more stuff. So let's say var projectile instance. Uh, this is becoming quite a bit, so let's just put this onto different lines here. Okay, so we're going to spawn it all in there and set all the variables. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to then say projectile instance dot get component rigid body, and we'll set the velocity equal to. Um, now I'm trying to remember if velocity. I say. Okay, so velocity is relative, or is it world? Um, I think it's it's not relative. It doesn't make sense to be relative velocity. So what we'll need to do is we need to figure out essentially which velocity, what velocity we need to give it based on which direction it's facing. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to say, well, we need to get its forward vector of the projectile and then add for and then multiply it by the force or the speed. We've chosen to go with speed. So we're going to say. Well, the velocity is the projectile instance dot forward, or sorry, dot transform dot forward, times by the projectile speed, and that's the that's where we want to fire it off at. Okay, and for now, we're not even going to do collisions for this video. We're just going to keep it simple and just fire off some projectiles, right? Let's make this projectile, uh, and also make a spawn point. So if we go to create an empty game object and just move it there by 0.5 units. Now 0.5 is right on the end, but we might want to put it at like 0.6 so that it doesn't spawn inside the thing. So 0.75, and we'll call this um, spawn point. I'm going to drag that in here to the spawn point, and the projectile's a prefab. Let's go make it. So we're going to make a sphere with no collider, and we'll make it a very small little bullet thing. We'll go to resources and make it a prefab. So we'll just call this projectile. Projectile, there we go. And maybe that's even still too big, we'll see. Uh, what if I was to spawn that on there? Wait, then unattach it and then put it to its actual scale, which is 0.5. What about 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25? That's perfect, yeah, I want it. Okay, that's what I want. So projectile is 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. And there it is. It's in there, so we can drag that into the player. If we go to the player, 
and drag that projectile in as a reference. So now the weapon script knows what projectile to spawn in. It's going to grab that and it's going to get a rigid body off it, which is important. So let's make sure it's got a rigid body with a mass, yeah, whatever, drag. We'll turn off angular drag. We don't want any drag at all. We simply want, um, we do want continuous dynamic movement with no constraints. Um, and we want to interpolate the movement, which makes it not look weird. We don't want to use gravity for this. Okay. Also, I'm not sure if, I can't remember the difference between continuous and continuous dynamics. I'm just going to leave it as continuous. Okay, let's leave it like that. Now, we set the speed as 5 for the projectile. I don't know how fast that's going to be. We'll, we'll see. We'll, it'll be fine. Um, okay, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm aware, that probably is everything. Uh, let me just do a quick double check on the script. We get input for ourselves, and then we spawn in the projectile on the network. Everyone sees it, and it gets fired off with, their, with its own rigid body. I'm, actually, I'm concerned, though, that this is only getting called on our computer, on our client. Okay, so the way to fix this is basically, uh, this will work, right? They'll spawn on both, but ours is the only one that will get the velocity because setting this code, won't get, it won't get run on the other computer. So what we want to do is we want to make a function, private void. We want to put this tag before it, RPC, or pun RPC. And what that allows us to do is, as you see, a replacement for RPC attribute with a different name. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just the, uh, you, you probably don't know what this is anyway. I'm not going to explain it uh, fully. But essentially, you can call this function, and it gets called on every client. So if we actually put the spawning logic, uh, which is this, into here, so we just say fire projectile. Uh, da -da -da. So the fire projectile is here. Let's just uh, fix that indenting. OK. We want this to happen on every computer. And then in that case, we don't even need to use photon network to instantiate. We can just instantiate it normally. Um, because that um, object is going to get spawned on every computer by the... Um, how do I explain it? So if I up here say RPC, or actually it has to be photon view dot RPC, the method name is fire projectile. Sadly, you have to do it as a string like this. And then any parameters, which there aren't any. Let me just see what the problem is. Um, wait, no. Oh, the target. Okay. Sorry. So the target is all. We want everybody to get this, including ourselves and the other clients. All clients in our lobby, in our game, will have this function called on their version of this player, right? On this on this uh, player. So they'll all fire a projectile off. They'll spawn in this prefab. They all have access to the prefab. They'll all spawn it in. And they'll all get the rigid body component and fire it off. Everyone will do that on their own computer. And that will hopefully sync it across everywhere. Now, technically, oh, there could be problems where someone's computer doesn't quite doesn't spawn it in. It doesn't happen. That's why we've got to make it a bit more robust in the future. But for now, this is just what we want, which is good. Um, so we call RPC only if it's us and then everyone actually fires it off. So we're the only one who can shoot from our own player, but everyone sees it happening and uh, simulates it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go onto the player and make sure it's all fine, which it is. So let's go test it. Let's go file, build, run, and I'll see you guys soon. Okay, I just had a little test of it before. Uh, obviously I showed you guys just to make sure it all works. So as you can see here, here's our player in the middle. Then if I tab out to this other player, you can see if I move around, which works, and I can also left click to shoot in that direction, and it all works just fine. There is only one problem, there's only one slight concern, which is the movement of our gun thing. Um, the, the main problem is when we're not moving, it sets it back to there in that direction, which is zero because we're not, we don't have any input. We only want to set it back if, um, we actually, if we actually mean to do that. And also, it's probably best if we start to think about it, um, as you see, the rotation of our player is smoothed, whereas on our own, it's snapped because we haven't told it to smooth, but the network just tries to smooth everything to make it all seem correct. Now, that's technically problematic because we might both see projectiles going slightly different locations because um, on ours, we fire it instantly, and on the others, it smooths and fires it, which is kind of a problem. 
Now, we won't worry about the uh, little bits like that right now, because that's only we we'll need to worry about that when we get a bit more serious of it in the upcoming videos. Uh, we just need to do the last thing right now, which is fix the movement. And I don't even need to show you an example of this working, because it, well, it's pretty easy to work. All we want to say is um, we want to make sure that the calculated movement vector is not zero before we try and actually move. If we're not moving at all, if our calculated movement is just zero, vector 3.0, because we haven't moved on the z or the x, then we don't rotate our character. So if the uh, calculated movement does not equal vector 3.0, then do this. And then that's it. And that's done for this video. So I hope you guys, you know, learned something in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I'm going to be putting the code up on my GitHub after this video, so you can have access to that. Uh, video should be back to being more regular now that I've done most of the work I'm doing with our website. Uh, more, you know, news to that uh, will come out on that over the next week when we actually release it and I'll be doing a video on it as well probably so stay tuned for that if you like this video then feel free to leave a like and subscribe check me out on all social media down below uh, share this with friends blah da blah da blah da yada 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 um, but yeah guys thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one peace